Alrighty, welcome back to Two Story Props video tutorials. Um, I'm going to be laying up some fiberglass cloth into the Toma ear piece uh, today. And like I said in the earlier video, today is a warm day, so this resin is going to cure really fast. Um, I'm probably only going to get about two thirds of this uh, fiberglass for this amount of resin because. Uh, I'm suspecting a portion of this will cure in the cup. Um, so resin tends to cure faster in warmer temperatures. Uh, if you read the the manufacturer's label on the uh, on the can, it says, "Let's see. I can't find it. They got new packaging for the 3M brand fiberglass resin, but uh, typically you don't want to be fiberglassing." Uh, in temperatures colder than 55 degrees, however warmer weather tends to be better for it. Um, the cold weather does not uh, prevent, the, prevent the resin from curing, it just makes it cure way slower. So I actually like curing, uh, like fiberglassing in colder weather because it gives me more, more working time, I'm more efficient with my resin usage, and uh, I can always move the, the mold into a warmer area um, but being out in the in the warm weather that means I can churn out parts quickly um, you know and I can get like a, an assembly line kind of thing going on so I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, you know add the, the the curing agent to the fiberglass resin and as I said before with this amount of resin that I use it's about 30 drops um, your fiberglass package will tell you rough mixing proportions. All right, resin, the curing agent is in. And just like if you are mixing up a cup of rubber, you want to scrape the sides. You want to be sure that the resin in the bottom area of the cup is getting mixed in because uh, for the most part it does cure everything, but you know, just play it safe, mix it thoroughly. I'm mixing pretty, you know, pretty violently here, so there's going to be a lot of air bubbles in it. Um, but it doesn't matter at this stage because this is the inside of the piece. This is part you're not going to see. Um, now a lot of people, a lot of you know amateur fiberglassers will tell you to get some spray adhesive and spray the inside of the piece and then lay your fiberglass in. Um, that is not recommended because the spray adhesive does take up space and it will adhere to the fiberglass cloth in a way that it will prevent some resin from seeping into it. So the way I like to make the glue basically is just you know pr uh, replace the spray adhesive is I'll just layer in a, a thin coat of the fiberglass resin and that'll provide enough tack for the cloth or the mat to stick to. Um, and it'll also, you know, help the part in, in terms of strength. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay in this piece and being sure to overlap the edge. Um, and that's just so I know 100% of the surface area is being covered by the fiberglass. Um, so the, the mold is actually starting to warm up from the gel coat. So I'm going to go ahead and pat these layers in and you can see I'm, I'm, not, I'm not brushing, I'm patting. I'm pushing the resin into the, the fiberglass cloth. Um, and you can see a distinct color change between the, the white clear color of the fiberglass cloth and the yellow color of the resin that's soaking it in you know, and changing the color of the cloth. Um, wow, it's, it's really warming up here, so this, this might be it for this video tutorial. Um, 
maybe not. <laughs> With this particular piece, I am going against what I said in the previous video tutorial in alternating the directions of the pieces. And that's just because I have some area I have to fill pretty quickly. And this is not a load-bearing piece either, so it doesn't have to be the strongest piece on the helmet. But knowing, knowing when you can cut corners, um, knowing how the fiberglass acts when you apply it in different ways, that's only going to come from experience. Uh, do try to use the most ideal methods if this is your first time fiberglassing. I apologize if I'm moving the part out of the camera. Uh, view. I'm new to doing this video kind of stuff, so um, and while I'm working the part, I can't actually see what I'm videotaping. So, yes, I said videotaping. I was born in the 80s. I might actually get this piece done for y'all. Yes, I said y'all. I live in Huntsville, Alabama get over it. Yeah, so I've actually been able to finish fiberglassing this piece. Uh, like I said before, this is a this is not a load-bearing piece, so it doesn't have to be the strongest piece. Most of it's going to be cut off and then glued on to a helmet, so uh, the, the roughly one and a half layers I've applied will be strong enough, and I say half because of the overlapping I've done. Um, and here what I'm doing is I'm, even though all the fiberglass cloth is in, I'm going in and, and patting down any potential bubble areas. Uh, the fiberglass cloth can capture bubbles, and if you're not careful, if you catch a bubble in a uh, stress point, you're not actually helping out the piece. You gotta, you gotta grind that away and re-fiberglass it, so. Um, that's pretty much it. As you can see, this fiberglass has cured in the cup um, during the you know duration of this video. So uh, do be sure to work quickly. Um, if you're new to fiberglassing, work in small increments like I've done. Um, I find that working in larger increments, even though I have several years of fiberglassing experience, I find that working in larger increments. Uh, makes more waste fiberglass resin and uh, it makes you rush faster so take your time work in small increments uh, don't forget to wear your respirator I am not wearing a respirator for this video so you can hear me but otherwise I would be wearing a respirator uh, this is laying out fiberglass cloth by two-story props